Hello, I'm Llewellyn King, co-host of MECFS Alert, and I'm talking with Dr. Andreas Kogelnik out in uh, Mountain View, California, which is in Silicon Valley, the glamorous Silicon Valley. But we're not here for purposes of, of glamour. We're here to find out more about the Open Medicine Institute and the work that that institute, headed by Dr. Andy, as we call him, is going to do and is doing about CFS. Uh, we generally believe in the CFS community, if you will, that there are outbreaks. And uh, obviously there's, there's upstate New York, 85, Lake Tahoe, 85, Florida, somewhere about the same time, then 1955 in England, the Royal Free Hospital. These, But you have a rather different view of this. That these may not, in fact, be clusters as they appear to be. Well, I think there's actually some evidence to suggest that they're not clusters, but perhaps an ongoing larger process, and that maybe uh, it may be a, a viral illness that's blowing through, and that's been blowing through for some time, or it may be a combination of that and environmental factors that have caused us to, to trigger sort of more immune uh, disease. Uh, but I think part of what's made us think that it's more clustered is, is the way we've de we detect them. And uh, I think our ability to detect things uh, has been somewhat limited in the past, and we're now starting to be able to do that in larger and larger populations. And uh, we may have very well seen these clustered outbreaks simply because someone in that region was interested in, in pursuing it. Uh, and now uh, we have the ability for the first time to, to, to sample more broadly and try to connect some of these things together. If you think of it in terms of clusters, and the two predominant ones were the two I mentioned, Lake Tahoe, uh, a place called Incline Village, and I think Lindenville in upstate New mm -hmm. York, um, the far western part of New York State. <coughs> if you think of it as clusters, this suggests an environmental trigger. If you have a lot of people in one place getting a disease, it's often assumed as an environmental trigger. And yet, these are very different populations. Lake Tahoe tends to be a vacation, upmarket, uh, uh, well-behaved sort of community with lots of resources and medical resources. Upstate New York is more hard scrabble. It's a very people there have very little money and try very hard and can't afford fancy treatments and probably don't go to doctors as frequently as they ought to. So there's, there's no relationship there. That, that, that seems to be an anomaly to me. Well, I think we certainly haven't seen a socioeconomic tie to any particular level or group, uh, in, at least in my experience and the other physicians I work with. Um, so clearly it's not a disease of class. Uh, and in terms of geography, the spread seems to be equally broad. So I, I would say, you know, for, the, for I haven't looked at the Lindenville outbreaks as, as closely, but uh, for Lake Tahoe, there's a huge amount of traffic between Lake Tahoe and the LA region, and, as well as the San Francisco area. And we indeed, if you look in the, the literature, the newspapers of the time, we saw actually outbreaks of yuppie flu in both of those areas around the same time. So that clearly there was more going on than just that was a very unfortunate name, wasn't it? it? Yuppie flu. It was. It was. And and you know, I, I think the idea of that being limited to one area. You know, in Incline, you had Dan Peterson, who was you know the, the consummate physician and recognized that there was something going on and it was something new. Who, who could put perhaps a different label on it as well, but uh, at least alerted people that that, was, that existed and drew attention to it at the time. And in upstate New York, you had David Bell, who exactly. I have described as the Nelson, Likewise, Nelson Mandela of this uh, terrible disease. And, and both of them wonderful physicians identifying something that happened in their local community, and both personality-wise, people who don't give up easily on, on a problem. And uh, so that frames it as an outbreak uh, because it's their local area, but uh, they had no way of measuring what else was going on elsewhere in the country. Genetics is an interest of yours, and the Human Genome Project and our mapping of, of who we are. Uh, how does that play into chronic fatigue syndrome or myalgic well, encephalomyelitis, as some people prefer to call it? I think genetics is, is a key piece of this and may actually predispose some people uh, to 
this disease more than others, but genetics is, is sort of just the blueprint. And what interests me more than genetics is genomics, which is how that blueprint is used in our, on our, in our everyday functioning. What, what does our body do? Yeah, what is genomics? Genomics, right. So it's the, the, the expression of that, that blueprint, that genome, uh, and, and what proteins does it produce? What changes in the body with given stimuli and given, a given viral pathogen or a given environmental uh, insult and so forth? And getting down to the, the expression level at a molecular level, so the very smallest level that we can possibly look at in, in the body is, I think, a key part to unraveling some of this. I hope you do unravel it. I really do. Me too. Good Lots night. of people Good helping us. To you, doctor, doctor. Thank you so much. If you would like to sponsor MECFS Alert, please contact us at mecfsalert at gmail.com. Help us to help you.